Hello everybody, it's Sephiroth Level 4 for another mission video. Today we're going to be doing a whole load of Wutai stuff, starting with the Remnant Strike again, a new threat. Even with the five Saints of Wutai eliminated, the Wutai's anti shinra elements are still active. The Crescent Unit has taken the Saints' place to bring the Remnants together. Raid the Crescent Unit's base immediately. Okay, we're going to be spending a lot of time fighting the Crescent Unit. Um, so yeah, this is part two of the uh, recording that I did. Excuse me. Part two of the recording that of missions that I did in, in um, after episode 11. Um, this is being posted after episode 12 goes up, but um, if you're watching this from the playlist, it should be placed before episode 12. So, yeah. Um, you get a lot of gold rolling pins from this, which are nice. The gold rolling pin is an item that has absolutely no use except to be sold for $50,000. Oh, 50,000 gold. So, uh, yeah, it's kind of awesome. Gil, I guess. 50,000 gil. Which is an incredible amount. Two hero tricks. Enemies here are generally on the harder side, but we're gonna get good rewards from this. Uh, death wish for Zack. With Shindra's main forces in Wutai, the Crescent Unit snuck into Midgar yet again. They want, still want your head. The Turks have found their hideout, so conduct a preemptive strike to save your skin. <sighs> Excuse me. So yeah, the maps here are going to be relatively small, but like I said, some good stuff to get out of this. <laughs> like Hell Plazaga. It's kind of funny seeing me still using Hell Thundaga here, where like, where I am in the recording, I haven't used it for a while. <laughs> It's like one of the best things in the game, and then you just get better stuff, and then you get better stuff than that. It's so funny that I just completely skipped the Dark Blizzard. I remember in my original Let's Play, um, I actually used the Dark versions of the Materia for a while because I guess it just wasn't as uh, adventurous. But not so here. Anyway, you get darkness out of that. It's amazing. I start, like, I clear out my nose and throat and everything, and I start recording, and all of a sudden, just the, the mucus and the yawns start. Also, this is something I just want to point out. How often do you open up the map in the church? It actually has a map. Infiltration. Crescent Unit Detachment has snuck into Midgar, reaching the upper layers. This actually worked in our favor. Their positioning has them trapped. Head to their location and annihilate them now. We get a shop out of this. Um, as I pointed out, I think in the first mission video, baby, originally most of the shops were not rewards for the missions. They were found in treasure chests in the missions, which uh, was kind of mean. So the game just made it a little easier on us and um, streamlined the process of getting the shops. Got another gold rolling pin out of that. Adamantites. Um... Yeah, man, I just yawned so much. It's not the game, it's the it's the talking, and it's my medication that makes me just yawn incessantly. It drives me crazy when I'm trying to record. It's a minor nuisance at, at other times, but uh, yeah, this one is is uh can be difficult because you got two of these dudes here. Um, but yeah, if you get Eris, then. That's that. <laughs> Let's check out the Sector 7 shop and see how broken it is. Okay, so here <laughs> we have the Wizard Bracelet. Now we've been using the Dragon Omelette for a grand total of about an hour in my game time, maybe 40 minutes, but the Wizard Bracelet and we got an element blade, which uh, adds ele all elements to your attack. The wizard bracelet absorbs fire, ice, and lightning, as opposed to the dragon omelet, which just halves it. So all you have to do is sell one or two of the gold rolling pins that you just got <laughs> and buy it. And you have one of the most broken accessories in the game. Hooray! Uh, now we don't have to worry about... Um, elements anymore, and it also gives us more spirit and MP on top of 
the bonuses that we got from the Dragon Omelette. Let's see, Wutai in the slums. We have determined the Wutai troops in the slums are serving as support for the Crescent Unit. If they find out the Crescent Unit is no more, they may take desperate measures. Head to the slums immediately and vanquish the Wutai troops. Get Giltas out of here, which is um, an important piece of uh, materia for hard mode endgame bosses that... <sighs> Excuse me, that I'm not going to be using. Um... But yeah, we're going to be keeping the the wizard thing for um, most of the game. Until we get stuff that's even better than that. Although not with the same effect. I don't think that any of the Genji equipment, which is going to be the ultimate equipment in the game, um, has a uh, effect of absorbing elements, unfortunately. So you're going to have to make that concession. Oh no. And luckily we can survive this. Also, if you have wall or barrier, once again, really good for actually having that damage. It's like I'm allergic to recording. My nose just goes crazy. If you don't have wall on, make sure your HP is up a little bit at least, or you have uh, a whole load of potions. The, um, yeah, these guys, like, generally, aside from their, like, attack there, they're really not going to do too much. The ones with the maces use the, um, magnitude 8, but the ones with the axes just chop you. But yeah, once again, Odin comes in, uh, comes in the clutch. anti shinra base. The Crescent Unit, having failed its assault on Midgard, now escaping to reunite all Wutai. We're able to expand the anti shinra movement. These anti shinra elements must be crushed as quickly as they appear. Go to one of their bases and quell the rebels. See, I have to talk through the yawning, because otherwise I'm going to, uh... Deathblade. Uh, I'm gonna miss the, the timing, since this is pre-recorded. <laughs> Dog is leveling up over there. I'm seeing if I can do anything fun with it. <laughs> can I do anything fun with my barrier? Not yet, not yet. How about with darkness? We already have quake. I can make wall out of it. Do I make wall out of it? Yeah, I do. Okay, cool. It's wall with 80% HP as well, which is really nice because I really need the HP ups. Uh, so yeah, so now um, I just put on another darkness instead, but uh, darkness is very useful, it seems. We made quake out of it, we made wall out of it, but uh, yeah, wall is barrier and barrier together. It is just extremely useful all around. That was me. And it just leveled up twice, I think, <laughs> in one battle. Yeah, see? It did very little damage to us, or relatively small damage to us. But, uh, it's, yeah, wall is gonna be the one of the most useful things to have for a long time until you get equipment that gives you that auto barrier. But with, uh, six slots in your materia in the first place, it's, um not hard to have a space for it. Almost got another, uh, <laughs> almost got another Odin over there. We get three hero drinks out of that. The, like, the fun thing about the missions, like, they can be pretty tedious, but the fun thing is just how overpowered you can make yourself. Anti-soldier weapons. We have received information on powered-up anti-soldier weapons under development to the Wutai base. Go to the base immediately and eradicate the Wutai remnants together with the new weapons. <laughs> Speaking of equipment that gives you an auto-barrier, Moonbracer. I want to say the Moonbracer gives you auto-M barrier? We'll see. Um, let's get out of here. Yeah, I just don't wanna don't wanna deal with those guys. Um, yeah, I, I was at this point I was recording for like 
two and a half hours straight, so I just didn't want to deal with the enemies. That's the one thing this game does, to make sure that you don't, like, do all of the missions at the very start. This is me forgetting to use wall. <laughs> yeah, they, they just use that, like, right off the bat. What the heck, dude? They're very, very mean. Um, what was I saying? Yeah, the one, the one barrier, really, to the game, to, like, not doing all the missions immediately, is the fact that there are so many of them. So you're just like, ah, I don't want to spend another three hours doing missions right now. I would like to regress the story. It's one reason why I've been breaking them up, like, between chapters, essentially. Like, some missions you only unlock between chapters, but there's a bunch still that, like, we technically have access to, but, like, that's just a lot of time in between. I want to have, like, a maximum of two mission videos between each episode. I think in in the end game of the original Let's Play, um, I had, uh, yeah, I'm just trying to circle around these guys and slowly try Thundaga them to death, because it does hit them three times. It does about... 15,000 damage. Just keeping ahead of the, um... Uh, my eight, make sure, making sure my HP stays up. As I say. Um... In the original Let's Play, I think, like, one of the later... Moonbracer, one of the later times I had... Like, three or four mission videos in a row, and that was just a lot. But that's also, like, the end game where you just have everything. You have to finish it. Uh, let's see, the Moonbracer keeps barrier active, yeah. So you just have a permanent barrier effect and spirit plus 10. Uh, it's not too bad, but we have a lot of good stuff equipped at the moment, so like... It's a waste of space for us. Annihilate the Crescent Unit, neutralize the commander. Wutai remnants whose anti-soldier weapons we destroyed are regrouping, gathering their commanders to plan future anti-shinra activities. We won't allow them this opportunity to raid their base. So this is rated 8 stars, uh, which is a lot, but it's actually, as far as I remember, easier than the previous things because we're going to be fighting soldier, like troopers here, rather than um, rather than the anti-soldier weapons. Yeah, so we could just use Quake and kill them really fast. <laughs> so it, it's just a lot easier than enemies that have limits and, and things. Let's see. Last of the Wutai. The Wutai remnants have lost their leadership and the Crescent unit has slowed down without their henchmen. Now's our chance. Before they reorganize to attack their last base and smash the Wutai remnants. Again, this is going to be a really fast one. Uh, there's two chests here. Always good to, to do that little circle around yourself because they do like to start hiding chests behind you. Which is very mean. AP up double plus, and once again, quake, quake, quake. <laughs> no damage. Platinum bagel. These enemies are also susceptible to gravity if you need to use that. Uh, crush the Crescent Unit. With Wutai Remnants obliterated, the Crescent Unit has been defanged, unable to carry out any more anti shinra activities. But we suspect they'll carry on with their lethal, lethal covert operations. Continue to crush their bases. <clears throat> Dispel Blade is, is pretty neat. It's exactly what it sounds like. It's an um, AP attack that uses Dispel, or, you know, has a Dispel effect which gets rid of any enemy buffs. So, it could be nice if your enemies just obsessively use... Um, <laughs> I just decided to buy a whole load of potions. It's, it'll be nice if your enemies just obsessively use, like, wall and stuff, and you don't have quake or anything that just ignores defense. It's also just so nice to be able to spam quake. <laughs> That's why we're keeping the uh, the gold bracer on, or whatever it's called. Crescent unit annihilation. Most of the crescent unit bases positioned throughout Wutai have been brought under control. Their communication links grow weaker by the day, so let's continue to put pressure on them. 
So we get Goblin Punch from this, which is one of the single most important materia in the entire game, and not because it's good. <laughs> but uh, yeah, Go Goblin Punch is going to be amazing, and we're just going to once again spam... There it is. Spam uh, Quake on these guys. And now it's time to go to the fusion menu. Fusion number one, Goblin Punch. Number two. Let's see what we need to use. Do, 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 do. Uh, uh, uh. Rush Assault. Okay, so the Rush Assault is a uh, material that we got as a reward in the last episode. Um, that it makes it so that your Angeal, you get Angeal's DMW more often. Um, however, they're also just really good for Materia Fusion because they are subservient to whatever it is that you get, like, attach them to. So, with it, with a Rush Assault and Goblin Punch, we can make the highest version of that, which is Costly Punch. Enable special attacks that expend HP to deal non-physical and non-magic damage. So it's, it's like darkness, except a single punch, and it is the most overpowered thing in the entire game. I'm trying to think, like, what do I use uh, on this to give myself more attack? Um, the mechanics of Costly Punch are very interesting in that the more HP you have, the more damage it does. And that doesn't mean the fuller your HP is. It's the more HP you have, the more damage it does. So... Um, Having 5,400 HP will probably do 9,999 damage. Like, it'll do the max of what we can do right now. Uh, before they were regrouped, the Turks have provided us with information on a base where the Crescent Unit is reorganizing to regain its power. Crushing this base would bring us closer to forever eliminating the Crescent Unit, raid the base, and halt the reorganization. Um, and I want to say that Costly Punch takes, like, an eighth or, or something like that of your health... Uh, to use of, of your like max health or your current health. I don't know. Maybe it's an eighth of your current health um, 80,000 SP uh, But yeah, I try to use it here and then I realize that this is just not the not the place to do it, but As you can see it started doing 9,999 and then it was just doing less because I had less HP because it costs HP to use um, this is really good to pair with, like, yeah, they have insta-death attacks. This is really good to pair with, like, um, regen, royal crown, or, uh, Dranga, if you have a really good Dranga and a high magic stat. Anything to give yourself HP back, essentially. Yeah, I'm seeing if I have anything that can protect against, or anything I want to get rid of, but, uh, ooh, yeah, the Mithralm is a better version of the Gold Omelette, so now we have 100%, plus 100% MP. Wutai Suppression, with their bases lost, commanders of the Crescent Unit have escaped into the caves in the outskirts of Wutai. Now may be our best chance at vanquishing the Crescent Unit once and for all. Hurry to the caves. We get Magical Punch out of this. I never really use Magical Punch, but it has a similar, um, similar, uh, I, I think it just does damage based on your your magic or something uh, like i said never really used it but we get gold rolling pins out of this once again i think these are no i'll stop twister never mind um what was i saying so yeah costly punch is going to be really good like right now it's not great just because we don't have a lot of hp in general but once your hp goes up and once you are able to break the damage cap um it becomes the weapon or the materia for endgame boss fights these guys are just going to be annoying because they can like i said they got insta death attacks so you just got to get lucky here we don't have uh, anything to pre prevent instant death at this point so we're just gonna have to uh do something else I think I put gravity back. No, I don't. I try the hell stuff to see if I can, if I can uh, get them back with the instant death. But alas, 
can't do that. I think eventually I, I put gravity back on. Yeah, costly punch takes a little while to like charge up. You know, like you have to uh, bring your arm back to, to swing the punch, and also it is very close range. So it's difficult to on enemies that move a lot. You know, I'll admit there it's like very situational, but f as a boss killer, like for the big bads that have a bazillion HP, uh, it's it's a. 100% necessary. These guys, not so much. Although, like, I guess you can hit multiple enemies if they're right in front of you, but it, it's not always the best thing. Okay, I got lucky there. And we get Magical Punch of that, alright. Got a bunch of... we got a lot to go now. Okay, so that's it for the Wutai things we can do right now. Where do I go next? Uh, okay, Zack the Treasure Hunter, I guess. Items in the plains. Monsters possessing items can be used to catalyst for materia fusion. Okay, that wasn't nice of you, Dovey. There's monsters, and they got materia fusion items. That's all you gotta know. Okay, so the dual horn here um, usually has a. Yeah, fat chunk of feathers. The dual horn usually has a barrier that uh, either prevents magic or physical attacks, but costly punch is neither of that, so it just goes right through that. In tropical island, discover a monster that drops items. <laughs> oh yeah, this, I was like, oh whoops. We, okay, uh, we wish to d exactly determine whatever. I discovered a monster that drops items as reusable material fusion. Head, we need more details on the monster and the items. Head time, take down the monster and grab the items. Head to the island to take down the monster and grab the items. Oh, Dovey. Oh, oh, past Dovey. But, uh... Essentially, if you, if you just want your strategy, like, right now, it's, um... You know, get... HP up, materials, uh leveled up a lot and just find some way to be able to heal yourself you know like put cure on or something you know keep kiraga kira um these guys are so annoying if you have uh yeah i just punched him in the face edamentite um if you have wall those guys are less of a bother but they could still do status things to you like stun you Item for fusion. Every good soldier operative who wants to power up his materia needs items that can act, act as catalysts in materia fusion. Therefore, we established an item search program. We have searched our database and found a location where quality items can be found. Please head there immediately. Um, so yeah, if you just focus on HP up, HP recovery, and uh, costly punch, you'll be able to just keep that max damage up for a while and you know not lose it. Seeing if I can do anything with the mastered health on Daga. Not really. Sadly. It's weird that there are no treasure chests out, like in these locations, but whatever. Dark Matter 3. What times 3? Quake is nice, but it's good to have some sort of materia that could be used on flying enemies because. Ooh, uh, 30 magic stones. Nice. Items in the caverns. Uh, item search program seems to be faring well. Next search location looks promising, but dangerous monsters may be on site. Nevertheless, we look forward to the results. Um, so the. Uh, dang it, what was I just saying? Yeah, make sure, like, with Quake, you have some other materia that can damage enemies that isn't gravity-based um, for the flying enemies, because otherwise you'll just be stuck, especially if you have to fight enemies that are immune or very resistant to physical attacks. These poor guys did not stand a chance. 
So was did I master wall already at that point? I think so. Ah, these guys. So. Yeah, take out the those stupid little hornet things first. Fat chocolate feathers. They're just jerks. They're mean. Items in the coal mines. We have now we now have information on monsters in the coal mines carrying precious items. This will be processed as part of the item search program. Go to the mines and obtain the items. It's so like Zack the Treasure Hunter is more or less just to get you f fusion items, like it's it's uh, as opposed to like accessories. There is like haha, <laughs> see right behind us. There is a um, a method to. You see, in this case, we needed some, someone, something to, to use against the Quaker, anti-Quaker. Um, there is like a, a classification system for the types of missions. There's accessory missions. There's um, story-ish missions. There's fusion missions. Here, drink. I think my HP up just mastered, so I'm gonna try to make a better one out of that. Yeah. Yeah, now we can make HP up double plus out of that. And why the heck not? Let's let's add some stuff to make it even better with uh, HP. Like fat chocobo feathers. Plus 240%. Oh, I decided not to. Okay. Okay, so yeah, now it starts over from there with 180%, so it's uh, gonna give us a lot of HP. Hooray. <laughs> okay, the last one over here. Items in the wastelands. We received word from the Turks that valuable items are hidden in untouched wasteland. Only a soldier operative can tackle this mission. You're asked to head to the site and collect the items. After this, there's going to be one more mission where we're going to get our revenge on on a, uh, a mission that was too difficult for us uh, a chapter ago. It's going to be great. Let's see, hero drink. First, we're just going to destroy these guys. <laughs> Three mithrils, right? And I believe I showed this off last time also, just to show you how difficult it was and talk about it a little bit. But now we're going to see how easy it is in uh, seeking priceless items. Or, or no, Zack the Materia Hunter. Is the anonymous hints here? Anonymous seems to have barely escaped an unannounced summon appearance. She now tells us about a secret treasure in the caves. It may be dangerous, but we still need to determine the security breach through her. Yeah, remember this one? Uh... It was easy up until the boss fight, but there's five treasures. One once again right behind us. There's a Helferaga there. Silver Omelette. Graviga. Faraga Blade. Some really solid stuff. A Carbon Bagel. And, uh, don't want to bother with these guys. And the boss fight against... <laughs> Bahamut Fury, except this time. Yeah, costly punch. <laughs> and we also have wall. As you can see, costly punch just destroyed his limit there. Like that, that was it. Zero. So we're just gonna punch him to death. And that's that. That's what you use what? costly punch the for. The wondrous Leviathan shines bright. <laughs> Two. Scenic hot springs not too hot. Three. A tourist attraction for all to enjoy. <sighs> I want to buy a Wu Tai like that. Out of the Shinra and get their cash. Then I'll use it to restore Wu Tai. <laughs> Glad you're all right. You know, you are kind of impressive. Of course I am. You're just noticing now? <laughs> Yes. 
So how does an impressive girl like you come by my mail address? Also, how do you know about the treasures in all these dangerous hotspots? You wanna know the truth? Oh yes. It was a blonde guy. Blonde guy? Right after the war ended, there was this blonde guy who came to see my dad. It was him that left all these soldier mail addresses and the information about the treasures. But my dad didn't pay any mind to the addresses or the treasure info. So, so I that's have why I decided to spam all the soldier addresses. But you're the only one I caught. Yeah, I, I originally thought this was Rufus Shinra. Hey, I told you that's not what happened. I wasn't tricked into anything. So, the blonde guy. Did you get a name or anything? Well, why don't you check your mail? I just sent you one to say thank you for dealing with that monster. Mail? Yeah, just take your phone out of your pocket and... Hey, what gives? I don't think so, kid. That didn't even manage to fool me once, so shame on you. <laughs> Treasure quest... <laughs> Failed. Mm. <laughs> oh no, what was I thinking? Getting all worked up dealing with a kid. Man. But still, who is this blonde guy giving out soldier addresses? Who could it be? The plot thickens. So yeah, I originally thought it was Rufus Shinra, but and we get the Hamid Fury summon, right? But I think it might be directly Lazar, honestly. Like, he was in Wutai. He has access to all the soldier information. And we have a couple... Of, yeah, we have access to the Great Cavern of Wonders now. And Yuffie's Notices, which we're not going to be doing. Uh, and we're not doing that either, because those are difficult. Um... But yeah, may as well read it. I heard this fantastic treasure deep in the caves. I'm telling you that to know that it's mine. There's no way I'm letting you have it. Absolutely no way. Sorry to spoil a good mood. But girls gotta do what girls gotta do. Ha ha ha. I love you, Fee. Anyway, that's gonna do it for this episode. Thank you very much for watching. And tell me what you think. Who do you think that the blonde hair guy is? Goodbye, everybody. Bye-bye.